Hello everyone. My name is Stevie McCarran Wigley and I am a trainer at Cloud9 Farm in Kentucky. We are based in Midway. Um, today I am doing a training ride on a client's horse that I have in the barn. His name is Behind the Bling. Uh, we bought him at the end of the winter last year. He's a 2016 thoroughbred. Um, he is Pennsylvania bred. He ran about seven times and was just very bad at it. So um, we ended up getting him. And um, this thoroughbred, I would say, is not your total typical thoroughbred. He is a little bit more on the quiet side. He's a little dull to the aids. So I really think it's important to teach the horse just the basics of listening to your hand, moving off the leg. So I like starting out on some small circles, um, just making sure that the horse is listening to your hand, following your hand, following your leg. Um, again, this horse is more on the dull side, so I try to be um, a little bit stronger with the leg. You actually do need to wear spurs with this horse. If you're riding a slightly hotter horse, you might not need those spurs. Um, but I, I do think that regardless, you know, your horse needs to be broke, needs to listen to the leg and hand and flat work right now is so incredibly important when you're trying to teach these guys to jump. Um, so, you know, this horse goes in just a plain snaffle, nothing complicated. Um, the consistency of his frame is very important. As you watch him trot around the ring, you I'm watching his hind legs as they're reaching forward, and I want to make sure that they fall into the footsteps of the front feet, meaning he's really reaching forward with his hind legs. He wants to be dull and quiet and not really use his hind end. You know, horses at the track don't really learn how to trot properly. They don't really learn how to canter properly. They all just kind of walk and jog and gallop. Um, so the different speeds, I think, is incredibly important. And asking the horse to also be able to work in a frame while you're doing those different speeds. Um, I love poles on the ground um, just as a little added element to your flat work. I think it's very telling when you canter to a pole and, um, you know, your horse is grabbing the bit and running or your horse is falling behind the leg or they're spooking a little bit. Um, so that's why you see a lot of poles scattered around the ring. Um, right here, we're doing a little bit of a shoulder in. This horse wants to be a little crooked, especially going to the left. He wants to be a little bit stiffer on the right rein. So the shoulder in is a very good exercise to get the horse really listening to my inside leg and outside rein. I'm pushing his butt over to the wall and bringing his shoulder off the wall with both reins a little bit to the inside. Um, and so these are, these are very good exercises to get the horse just a little bit more sensitive to the aids. When you're dealing with a horse like Reggie, that is very important that they're constantly listening and paying attention. And also watching his ears. I'm a big believer that the horse needs to be mentally in tune with me. His ears are back on me. It's not that his ears are back because he's upset. He's in tune with me. He's focused on me. I'm constantly asking him to do things, constantly really mentally connected with him. Um, so after doing a little collected work, it's important to go forward again at the trot, always trying to you know, do different speeds, asking the horse to do different things.